Ladies and gentlemen, Jordan Blake! Give me a hell yeah! How you been, dude? What up, what up, what up? Good to see you, buddy. What's going on, fella? Dude, hanging in there. How y'all doing? Excellent, excellent. Doing good? This is my friend Caleb. He's actually going to be uh, opening for you guys in Jersey uh, when you guys play with what? Impending yeah. Doom and some other bands, right? Uh, I set the kill. Uh, fit for rivals. That show, yeah. Hell yeah, that should be fun. Dude, hell yeah. And, uh, okay, it corrected itself. Um, is it lagging? No, you're good. You're good. Okay, cool. Dude, what is what is new, man? We well, have yeah. we we know you have a lot a lot going on right now. Um, I'm sure you saw. The uh, the recent the recent interview with, with Jag. Um, do you have any thoughts first off before we start asking a couple questions? Um, I uh, I do. I guess um, you know, I, I appreciate you giving him his time to uh, explain himself, and you know, it was just not a one sided thing. I I don't personally ever get to talk to him. Um, you know, like I've said before, there's no personal vendettas or anything. I, I'm just as confused as everybody else. So I just kind of stay in the dark and I focus on, you know, kicking ass at the shows that are coming up and writing the new music and just being the best that I can be. I mean, it's been such a long time since I performed. And that's really all I really give a fuck about is having that opportunity. Everything else is just fucking, you know. Just bullshit. It, it is way. what it is. He had yeah, but I mean, you know, we seems like we got uh, a lot of fan support, and that you know that makes me super emotional because I I didn't put myself out there for years just so that you know I didn't have to really know if people gave a fuck or you know they're mad or whatever. So the last two months has been really, I guess, ever since I started doing interviews with you. And um, demo team, I haven't, uh, you know, I, I wasn't speaking to people, but now I feel like I'm in a better place uh, in my mind, and it's cool. I get tons of support. Every single message, like 100% every single message is, is people backing us up and just wishing for the best, and one, they're wondering what's going on, um, as am I, but, you know, Music is music and politics and all that shit. That, that that's a different game. I'm old school from the hardcore scene. We don't fucking we don't do that type of shit. So I just let let it play out and uh I hope the best for both of us. Um I know guy got stings that, you know, I've wanted my whole life, like a wife, a kid, a house, like that's accomplishments and I mean, in a way I kinda envy you know, I look up to him, like, you know, he stuck out with my band for 14 years while I couldn't do it, you know, mad props to that, that was a, a hard, a hard thing to do, I'm sure, and all the other shit that happened that he had talked about on Alternative Press, like, back, back when, I don't really speak about it, but, you know, it had a lot to do with why Silent Drive never got to do as much as they could have it really held them back and you know i think it would have pushed a lot of people to never play music again he had uh mentioned that um he had been working on the dead serious track and then you guys had announced that you were going to do the reunion but i we had spoken that you had actually been working on the reunion for a long time how long had you guys been discussing this without anybody knowing that the original lineup was going to be getting back together. Oh man, like all the way back to where, you know, my addictions were my main focus and depression had taken over. I wasn't communicating. I was in a fucking self-made cave and they called, I want to say it's, it's been over two years. And, um, you know, they said, 
Would you be able to do it? Would you like to do it? Can you do it? And so all those those questions I had to answer myself before I even committed to anything. And sure, it took me like five minutes. I lied and at first, and you know, like most addicts do. And I said, yeah, I'm ready. Um, let's do it tomorrow. And then COVID hit, and I was like, okay, this is my saving grace in a sense. I really wanted to leave at that moment, but you know, it's given me two years to work on myself and to like actually commit to a recovery process, which is hard. Like anybody that's gone through addictions could probably relate. It's, you don't just, it's not like Nike slogan. You just don't just do it. Like you got to fucking work really hard at it and you got to have a reason. You know, I guess I always had a reason, but it always hurt not being with my band. You know, I kept going. I made multiple projects. A lot of them got signed. I toured with a lot of them. But those friends I had to make on the on the fly. And I ended up making really good friends with all the villain members and stuff for all my side projects. But there's nothing better than like playing with the Skylight Drive. Like when we all got in the band room when I flew out like a couple weeks ago, like I don't know. I was more nervous to do that than I was to probably fuck my first girlfriend. Like, I was just <laughs> like, oh, shit. Like, if I tank right now, they're all going to be like, oh, why did we fly this dick nose out? But uh, it felt good to take the stress off their back. They all took me aside, like, individually. And, like, I don't want to offend you or anything, but we had no fucking idea how, how it was going to work out. We just kind of flew out here just hoping for the best. And, you know, I've always shot been honest the with them. Hmm? So shot in the dark <laughs> kind of deal. Yeah, definitely. I know that uh, certain people have, have, have spoken on my name and said I've had, you know, all these terrible addictions since back in Skylar Drive, which completely wasn't true. Um, it happened a lot later in life and it was pretty bad. Nothing that I'm proud of, but I like to speak about it because I met a lot of people, you know, living that life and being in those places that were Skylight Drive fans. And then that was when it really hit, like, dude, you got to get your fucking shit together. Like, life yeah. isn't that bad. If it is that bad, it's that bad for everybody. Like, 100%. I don't know. I, I, I feel like. I like being around Skylet Drive because they hold me accountable. You know, they call me every day. Um, they check, make me check in with them every day. Um, you know, just to make sure that I'm all right. They know I was really close with my mom. They were close with my mom. She helped out a lot with the band. And like I've said in previous interviews, like my mom was all... I don't know. Well, she wasn't on pain meds because they couldn't give her anything when she was in the hospital because she had like an iron deficiency. But she, she was tripping. Like her mind was all crazy. And she was telling me like, no, nah, you got to stick with the music thing. I think, you know, I know what's going to happen and you need to be ready for it. And I was like, oh, man, she's crazy. Last words. I don't know how to take this. And when they called me, like eventually, when they originally called me before COVID had been announced, um, like that was the first thing I thought of. Is my mom was like telling me that, and I was like, no way, because she always thought I should have stayed with them. She thought I could have worked it out. Uh, I think I just jumped the gun, and I worried that all these big opportunities were happening so fast and I just didn't want to not be able to do it. I wanted someone to come in, take my spot and take them to that next level. I honestly didn't think I'd ever come back or it was ever going to work out or they would have wanted me, but I think, and I'm pretty sure the majority of it is, is the support and the fans. Like they told me personally, they've told me, you know, every time we put out a record, no matter how good it was, 50 to 60% of the comments would be like, where's Jordan? Go back, place she watched the sky. And that feels fucking good because, you know, we worked hard on that. We weren't very, we hadn't been playing music for very long. You know, those were some of the first songs we wrote. And they that should feel good, bro. Like, I was going to, I was going to tell you about a video I found from 2004. 
uh, when we made the band and it's before I had gotten any advice. I had made any singer friends and my voice is just fucking god awful. <laughs> <laughs> but I got the same shit, dude. <laughs> it's like you, it had to happen. Like, I don't think there's anybody that has walked on stage and it just, you know, I don't know. You could oh, tell that. Even before I sang good, I was always in the zone, though. Like, I've always loved playing crowds. Like, I've fed off the energy, the hardcore dancing. All of that stuff has always really got me fucking shit up on stage. And, dude, I got so much fucking emotion. I'm a basket case. I talk a mile a minute. And the only thing that really helps is is playing live shows. Like, when I stopped playing and I quit touring with all my projects, that was when depression hit. That's when I had to find the heaviest of drugs and try to replace it. It was yeah. it was impossible. You know, it led to fucking dead end roads and rehab and you know, having to come for come be honest with people that supported me for years and I hate doing it, but at the same time like yeah. It is a part of me, and it, I did take a long time off until I started talking to you and talking to Ryan and demo team and stuff. Like, I felt like it was pretty much over. The whole emo revival thing, I originally thought was a joke. I thought people were trolling me, like, oh, yeah, come sing to your songs at an emo night. And I'm like, man, like, fuck this shit. And they were like, no, we'll, we'll buy your ticket. You know, give you some money and you know just all you gotta do is a meet and greet you just gotta go and talk to people and did not expect anybody to show up so that was that, that was like the first time that me. that like rekindled the she watched the sky vibes for you because on those nights you you're performing those songs those on those emo nights correct yeah i sing along to the tracks did that did that kind of also help like re spark the the energy a little bit? Yeah, it really did because you know the the local band guys, uh, the promoters, you know, th those were the songs that you know kind of inspired them, and I guess to make their bands. And you know, I was kind of gone. I wasn't around to ever hear that. You know, I I left the band. And dude, MySpace was what was popping when we were touring. Like, things are so much different now. Like, you could DM your favorite artist on Facebook. You know, you, that that wasn't really a thing back then. So, I don't know. I got to hear and meet a lot of people that were, you know, reminding me of shit that had happened in their hometown or when we smoked a blunt together. And I was like, oh, yeah, I do remember you. And it's it's been cool i wanted to do the whole emo night tour thing and that was when uh just before skylet had talked about if we if i'd be down to do shows to record new music and i was like yes please like is nick especially always had this way of like supporting me and drilling me at the same time uh, hounding me about you know my decisions making me accountable and like i like when he calls like i feel like dad's calling and he's gonna you know give me that advice i need to hear and i'm glad he never gave up on music he uh none of the guys gave up on music it just i guess life kind of happened for them you know wives kids bills houses shit like that but me and nick uh you know we've done everything to stay relevant and to keep me he's he tried to get projects going and he writes fucking amazing. He even sings good. Um, so I'm really excited to get this new music out. Like there is no new Skylar Drive music on the internet right now. It's it hasn't even been sent to me. They won't even let me have it because they don't want me to leak it. But yeah. Um Can you I, can you tell us anything about how many tracks the boys have have done not how many we expect on the album or ep or anything like that but can you like do they have at least four or five tracks already completely done oh yeah nick, nick has a lot um that he wrote that he told me he wrote 
all with having, you know, picturing that I was still singing for him and like, because there's like a key, you know, every singer, are you a singer? I mean, Caleb yeah. is, Caleb is. I am, yeah. <laughs> okay, so, you know, there's there's like the key. There's like that key port, chord progressions that just really work with you. They, 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 yep, they, they pull the heart strings. And then there's other ones, they don't really do it. And yeah. Nick's always been able to help me sing at the, you know, the highest that I can, but while still st- sounding emotional. So I think there yeah. becomes a point where you sing so high that it really takes the cadence out and it's just more of like a synthesizer than it is like a heart box. Yeah, and 100%. Gotta have that certain tonal I, quality to it. Yeah. He... I mean, every everybody in a sky of the drive. I've said Nick a bunch of times, but Nick is the the main songwriter who does the progressions and uh, man, I got we got crazy stories. Like we were young, so you know we didn't have our own places back then. Uh, we used to hide up in his mom's uh, when he still lived at his mom's house. We'd be in his um, his big old walk-in closet at his parents' house, you know, just. And I'm doing things, and I was. And then him being like, okay, Jordan, here's this chord progression. What are you feeling? And I'm like, I'm feeling everything. But, you know, I went, I lost my grandpa, like, right when we started writing that EP. And that dude went to every show. He knew every lyric to every shitty song I ever wrote. Last thing his ass did was, like, I had a song, and all it said was, I'll be okay, like, the whole chorus. And the last time I saw him before he passed away, he was singing that song to me. And he was like, I hope you keep going on with your music. Um, Because I've always wanted, I always get down and I always want to quit. But it's not because I want to quit. It's because how am I going to survive? Like, how am I going to pay bills and all this shit? And I'm I'm 35. So, I mean, I have not given up yet. I keep finding reasons reasons and excuses to make it. But I'm only... I'm only my best self when I'm playing music and it's it saved my life so many fucking times. That's why I can't wait for just all this stuff to work out for both parties, everybody. I hope they get what they want because I know that there's enough to go around. Big fucking world. Um, I'll take whatever name we can get. I know that people will love us either way and that's my hopes is just the best for everybody. Um, it, it, it's a weird subject and it's like, you know, it's hard to talk about because you don't want to confuse people. And yeah, I feel like the people that want to go this way with us or the other way, they're going to do what they want. We're not telling anybody to do anything other than to look forward to what we have going on. And the only reason I feel they're there to tell this shit, you know, to tell them that is because they want to be there. And I don't know. We got some fucking big shows coming up. Like Damn our straight. first show back is, is Swan Fest, which is an honor to play. I love Will Swan. I love Dance Gavin Dance. He's, I've always looked up to that guy, pretty much everyone in that band. Cause we grew up together and, um, to see that he's created a legacy as being in a band that was the weird experimental band, but now is selling out theaters and, uh, you know, ballrooms yeah, and shit, playing real. with thousands of people. Like, that's amazing. Like, and they contacted us um, to play the show, which is really fucking cool because oh, yeah. I've always wanted to play it, but oh, yeah. never got the opportunity. And that's just the start. That's, that's going to be the first show back. It's actually in our hometown, close enough to call hometown. And uh, Dance Gavin Dance is playing, Animals as Leaders, like, Covet. Like, man, there's some pretty good volume. It's a good lineup um, for sure. That's a sick lineup. Dude, I saw that. Dude, I, I know that off, off stream, then, you told me that we could do something that we normally don't do, which is allow chat to ask you questions. Are you still Are you still open to that? Yeah, I'm down. If there's anyone interested in, uh, 
you know, saying, asking things because I'm doing my best to stay in the inboxes and, and write to as m- many people as I can. But the last couple of weeks, I've, I've stayed off of social media and I just focused on my writing and exercising and my dog, which I was going to show you guys. I don't know where the hell <laughs> he's probably eating something but um yeah i'm gonna be moving back to california in like a month to northern or southern northern at first because i'll be staying with one of the band members so that i could be there to get all this recording and rehearsal done because yeah. the shit's coming fast i think the first show's not even like a month and a half away. I guess Caleb, why don't you start us off with a question that you may have for Jordan? Um, so going back on to like the you haven't performed in a long time. Do you have that like fear of like, dang, do I still remember how to do this? Like, I I don't know if I still got it. Do you still have that like self doubt? Because I know when COVID hit and we stopped doing shows. Like my voice went to shit because I never, never sang. I was super paranoid about playing my first show, but until I stepped on on stage and still got that experience, and it finally like came out, it, like it was good for me. So do you? I, I just want to know, like, do you have that fear? I have that anxiety. I have that excitement because I don't know what to expect i've never played to over 500 people and the first two shows are going to be thousands you know yeah that's that's crazy like i've always been able to you know reach out and touch the crowd and like get that you know feel suck that energy out of them and yeah. pull myself up and I'm, I'm worried about the barrier and uh, how am I going to bat, how am I going to front flip into it there? Like, no. <laughs> um, I think that, I think that once. There are going to be YouTube videos I everywhere mean, when it comes out. Just performing for the band was, yeah, just performing for the band was, um, or singing for the band for the first time in 14 years was, um, you know, that was enough that was enough stress so i was like oh god like yeah <laughs> they're not happy no one's gonna be happy and this whole thing's just gonna shit out but having their support and having them all tell me that they were proud of of me for pulling through and still having the voice 15 years later like it really felt good and it made it a lot easier but i know not until i step on stage am i gonna know exactly yeah, exactly. But, That's kind of how I felt. So I'm totally, I'm banking off, uh, you know, people letting their hair down and fucking rocking out with me because I've always been like that. I, I'm gonna oh, give yeah. you, I'm gonna give you as much as you're giving me. One hundred percent. That's how I feel. Chad wants to know if you have yeah, any. COVID. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I thought my bad. It's okay. Uh, Chad okay. wants to know if you have any advice for for people that sing. On the high, that any tips for singing high ranges? This particular person says my voice always seems to want to be on the higher end, regardless of advice I've gotten from other singers like R and B and class, classical singers. So, do you have any tips for, I guess, opening your throat fully? Um, well, I have a high speaking voice, so I think that kind of works in my, you know, it kind of works for me, but. If you check out earlier stuff, like singing high did not come naturally. I was pushing um, very hot, uh, hard for my diaphragm more than I. I always relate singing to sex. Like, and this is a weird thing <laughs> to do, I guess. But I mean, you rush into things and you're all tense and you're stressed out. Like, you ain't going to perform right. You have to have your head and your breathing is super important. Um, before you even go to hit high notes, you, you got to breathe. You got to know how to breathe. You know how to properly, you know, I like to use a straw. I put a straw in my mouth before every time I sing or record high voices. 
and I, I pat on my stomach, like right above my diaphragm, and I count to 10 while breathing in slowly. And then I hold it for five seconds or five beats, and then I blow out for 10 beats. So inhale, hold, exhale. I do that 10 times. It takes a minute. Don't do it while you're driving. <laughs> um, that is going to get your 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 breath going, you know, you get the blood pumping in your body and always find, you know, what always worked for me is, um, practicing things falsetto first, like making sure that it's even possible. Cause if you can hit a falsetto, there's a chance that if you work at it, you get your full voice will go there. Um, in my, in my experience, yeah, that's um, a fact. Or you, or you can just go balls to the wall and throw your voice out. But the best, the best advice I think is just relaxing and, you know, don't overthink it and work into it. Like, you know, I, oh, I don't have my pan- piano on. I was going to show you right now, just how, you know, you want to work in with your tones and does he record? Can he answer that? I, I think so. Yes. To- I think so. Okay. Oh, Bill, like, when I record, like, vocal features for bands, I end up doing, like, six harmonies. I don't use them all, but I start off with, like, a, what I'm doing right now is, like, don't close your eyes. So, like, I was trying to do it at that tone until I got, don't close your eyes, and over and over and over again, and the next thing you know, I'm like, don't close your eyes. You gotta work into the false set on them. Do that like four times, and then do your high voice. You just gotta. It's climax. It's like foreplay. It's a you progression. Play with it and, <laughs> until it feels good, and then try it. And you're gonna sound like shit a couple times. Play with like, it until it feels good. Yeah. For for play some until, for some good. of the new stuff <laughs> that you for some of the new stuff that you plan on good. that you plan on writing for the. Uh, which I guess we'll just call it the new EP whenever it comes out is, are you going to reference uh video game stuff? AKA like, Hey, Na- Hey there nightmare, stuff like that. I'm sorry. Hey nightmare. Oh yeah. Um, the whole, you know, I always like to think big pictures. Like when I started, when we started the band, I knew that music could be a, a stepping stone into something because I didn't know how long post-hardcore music or emo shit was going to stick around. You know, the trends change so much. So what I always wanted to do was to build something out of the music, like the story, and kind of, you know, my goal is to have a She Watch the Sky video game. That's always been the thing. I want characters in it, kind of like the same thing as Soul Calibur. And, um... Yeah, like, it's a continuation. I mean, that's what Wires was going to be. Uh, it was originally called God from the Machine, and it was the it was the second part of the EP, because I don't know if you grasp what's going on, but, you know, it's written from my soul caliber character's position, Nightmares, his fucking nemesis, and his... Uh, princess or whatever was in reference to who are the fuck I was fucking back then and uh, telling her to go to the skylines you know because I wanted her to be safe and the second story is how you know it takes place in a different time when we didn't know what the fuck the skyline was you know that's why it's according to Columbus you know we're just kind of guessing on shit and like look guess a little spoilers or whatever is she doesn't make it she dies and this is the second god from the machine is his uh it's his it's his revenge and that's how he becomes the the light sensitive guy that was emotional writing these songs who becomes really angry at the way things worked out and the new music's a lot heavier um like, it's heavier than I ever thought it was going to be, um, which is so cool. So I'm kind of glad that I'm. we're just now getting to continue that story. Um, 
I don't know. And it all, it all references shit that actually happened in my life. I just try to turn it into like a medieval thing. In this is a two-part. I wanted it. I wanted it to be. I wanted it to be a different vocabulary and just not so because we hit like right when everything was emo, like heart broken hearts, like black, red, makeup, like the whole thing. So I wanted to try to write something that people could make their own and they can put themselves in the writer's shoes because. I mean, that's what Soul Calibur is, is everybody has a um, a different reason for wanting Soul Edge. If you ever watch any of the movies or the characters, they, they all want to, because Soul Edge, they can change, you know, the fate of the world. And that's basically, you know, what the, the singer is uh, fighting for. And uh, obviously, Nightmare will have to be my own nightmare because it's probably some copyright shit, but... At the time, I didn't know anybody who played Soul Calibur. <laughs> <laughs> Do you... So, this... yeah, I, and if anybody wants to... Fe- if any singers are going to feature on any of the albums, they have to become the character of the story. Oh, so let me be a story. <laughs> yeah, write your story, send it to me. I'm really wanting to do... I'm wanting it spread. And, like, I, that was one thing Kohi didn't do that I always thought it would have been sick. Because, you know, Claudia was the main guy. And I thought it would have been cool if there would have been features by other people who also had backstories that you could look into. And I don't know. I had a lot of time on my hands. I want to be a full-time musician. I got 24 hours a day to fuck around, you know? <laughs> yeah. I have a two-part question. Uh, the first part is, can you explain to everyone what Cannibal Music Family is? And then the second one is a little bit harder. I'm not sure if you can answer it. If not, I totally understand. Do you anticipate being able, or do you anticipate that you're going to have to pick a different name at some point? Or is there a way that this can be resolved? You know, either way, I'm going to be happy. Hell yeah. Uh, A drive under Skylit. Yeah, we'll drive Skylit lights whatever <laughs> no i mean i i the original band name was she watched the sky um back really? back before we ever played a show um that's what we wanted it to, to be and i guess it didn't roll off the tongue as well we thought it would have been a good album name and uh as long as the people that have been waiting for this for so many years are able to find it when they look for it on the internet i'm happy can you explain what cannibal music family is um cannibal music family is kind of like my way of i get a lot of questions of you know about the singing and about what to do with their band and all of this shit and the music industry is rough um it always has been it's cutthroat and it's hurtful, and it can really, really tear a person down. Um, when you think you're doing the best, you know, I got dropped uh, 2009 after doing 250 shows in four countries. I wasn't good enough, and you know that really ate at me because I did not know what I did wrong. Um, I wrote an amazing album uh, with a great producer, and I've never heard anybody say that it's not somewhat impressive that I went and did pop music after being in a post-hardcore band. And I've always loved pop music. I've always wanted to play what I want to play, but fortunately, that's not how it... I, I don't know. Maybe there's some bands out there that get to say that they play exactly what they want to play, and they're just booming all over the world, but fortunately, that hasn't happened to me. So, I don't know. It's like like Jordan Blake's emo like boot camp. Like I want artists to trust me. You know, I want them to come into the studio, let's write our music to get your music with me. Um I love helping. I got enough I got enough in my head that I will never be able to use it all. Um and I like being there for people. It's I have a lack of family. Um 
especially with my mom gone. Uh, me and my, my girlfriend, we've been together for three or four years. That's the closest person to me. Um, and now the band's back, which is my family. Um, so, yeah, all my family, none of them's blood. So I know that the industry can be like a cannibal. They will eat you up, chew you down, and spit you out when they're done with you. They'll get their money and whatnot. Um, it's not a label, but I want people to feel that they have somebody that has their back. Um, my connections become the artist connections. Anytime I'm working with an artist and I'm like, hey, I need to call so-and-so because I think they can benefit from this. Um, I'm featuring on a band song right now that I'm really trying to get to come on with me. But every time I get an artist, because I don't make them sign anything. So there's no contract. Um, it's just a trust thing. And I don't want your money. Either. I want you to pay me. I want you to I want you to pay me to help you when you can. If that is something that you can do, I need to eat and whatnot. But as far as selling uh, Spotify, all the stream shit, I don't want nothing of that. I just want to help you get it onto all these platforms without signing to a fucking label. Um, labels are scary. And they seem like the prize, but this is a different time. This is the time of the entrepreneur, art artists. You know, I see people on YouTube, they've never played a show and they got fucking millions of fucking followers. And I envy that. I respect the shit out of it. I'm like, damn, I've been on the internet since 2004, 2003 with my music. And it's just a new time. I just, uh, I want to help people because. It seems like a lot of us musicians struggle with addiction, depression. It's a whole other thing. Um, I don't know. I just want to be a big bro. I just want to help people out and, uh, you know, make a little bit of money to eat at the same time. My prices are pretty good for coming in and fully producing a song. Um, and that is something that is going to, now that I'll be making money this year, I'll be able to invest a lot more into it as a company. But... Any band that works with me, they're definitely going to be opening for Skyler Drive. If that's not a fucking thing, then I don't know. I'm trying I'm trying to get all these artists a chance to play to a good a crowd without having to sell 50 peaks, sell tickets. Because <laughs> that's robbery. Okay. That's highway robbery. Don't do that shit. Okay. When when play when you, you were talking about uh, Watch Others Ghost, right? When the, the label said, we're done. Yeah. Uh, was in, right after that yeah. happened, were you ever contacted by bands that we may know saying like, "Hey, we need a singer," and you were just like, "You know, it's not the right time." Was there was there any artists or or bigger acts that were like, "You're the perfect fit," and for some reason it just didn't line up? Well, uh, Catherine was lined up to be my band, live band. Um, they were a Sacramento hardcore band. Uh, that that Skylet Drive grew up with. They're probably the first band that I saw to play to 700 people without ever doing a tour. Um, their singer was a good friend of mine. He passed away, and I don't think the label really understood my respect for him as an artist, and I, there was no way I would have ever joined, let his, I don't know, didn't want anything to do with it, and it rubbed him the wrong way. I guess, because I think that the label had blown smoke up their ass, telling them, oh, yeah, Jordan will do it. He'll do it. He needs a band. He knows it. And it was like, no, nah, man, because, I mean, EDM blew the fuck up in 2008. Like, everything changed to dance music. Like, the hardcore scene started becoming irrelevant. Like, album sales went down. Guitars at Guitar Center went to, like, 20%. Like, all synthesizers and DJ gear went, like, 400% up. It's just like the, all the facts were there and they just wanted to deny it. And I don't know. I, uh, I want, I talked to uh, someone in Sayosin for a minute. I kind of wanted to do that. Wait, wait, wait. Sayosin, Sayosin hit you up before getting Anthony back? They just contacted you briefly? Yeah. They were, so they were shopping for wow. anybody and everybody, it seemed like. I got a demo sent to me. They asked uh, send back what I could do, and I didn't 
I never really don't think I ever sent it back because it was just, I mean, that's a band I've looked up to for forever. But, um, and once you, you know, you go try to sing a Cove record, like song after the year, it's hard. But, um, Anthony Green is probably one of my biggest influences, like as far as like a singer. He just has this really beautiful voice that's always made me feel some type of way. Um, but yeah, no, I, I, you know, I had a pretty, I think I had a pretty sketch. My name was ran through the dirt pretty bad by certain people. Um, after I left Skylar drive and you, you look at any rumors of Jordan quit because of fucking <coughs> drug, drug overdosing and all of this shit. And it's like, dude, I barely snorted blow back then. Like there was, I didn't have enough money to overdose. Like it was just people shit talking Damn! on social media that I made, but. Anyways, um, yeah, I got hit up by a lot of really good musicians, though. Um, I met a lot of really good musicians before they had made their own bands. Um, I moved down to L.A. for a while, felt that whole scene out to see if that was going to work. But, uh, you know, DJ Black, I think he's recently came on the show. Yeah, I actually didn't even know he was in Ghost with you. I saw somebody in chat say that earlier. And I was like, "What? Yeah. He, he, we didn't even talk about that. It's crazy." Yeah, um, yeah. DJ is probably one of the hardest working guitar players I've ever met. He's an amazing songwriter. He is put up with some bullshit in all of his bands, and now that he's now that he's running his own band and writing all the music, I'm super proud of him. I'm. Uh, He's always been, you know, my emotional rock on tour. We went to Japan together. Um, we did a lot of weird tours together. Um, when he was 20, 19, he was really young. And, um, yeah, I guess I have pretty much, I've got, I've been made band. My, the band I made was Speak of the Devil. Um, I actually introduced Wade to Richard from Secrets. And now Wade has been their screamer for. I love Secrets. Um, he's the screamer in Secrets. That's a funny story if you want to hear about that. So I had a manager. Uh, her name is Judy Taggart. Um, her husband was Stuart Taggart. He's one of the most old school OG uh, managers, tour managers, uh, business men. That I, I never, I met him once. Him and Judy came out to see Bless the Fall when we were on tour together at the Crazy Donkey in New York. And um, me and Craig used to have a thing every night where we would see, we would, you know, we would crowd crawl and see how far we could get and then how long they would hold us up. And I challenged him to it very, uh, prematurely without seeing I know, love the this. full potential of this guy. I love this. And, uh, you know, I, I got up on the crowd and they held me up for like a good 10, 15 seconds and I'm flipping them off on stage like, oh yeah, beat that. Well, I'm watching the whole set and I'm waiting. But his managers were there, uh, Judy and Stuart, and so he knew that like he had to kill it because they came out to see him all the way from LA. And I didn't know that because if I would have known Judy like I do now, back then, I wouldn't have challenged him because uh, Confide was also one of their bands, one of the bands that she managed, and all of those bands that went under her and Stewart are the hardest working bands. They pulled out of, I don't know, they're great. I've learned a lot from just watching the band she used to work with. But uh, yeah, Craig, I thought he forgot about it, and the whole set's over, and I'm like, oh, thank God, I think he was going to beat me. And then uh, some rap, the, the the drummer would hit like a 808 and a rap track would play. Then he climbed on top of the crowd, got about 10 rows deep, and they held him up for a good three minutes. I was like, fuck this. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, never challenging him again. I think we got time for but one yeah, or two. Craig- I'm sorry. I think we got time for one or two okay. more. Uh, I, I We have another fan question coming in. It says, regarding the new material, 
Do you anticipate songs like The Past, The Love, The Memory, or songs without screaming like ballads, stuff that has piano written? Of course. Um, anytime someone close to me passes, which thankfully hasn't happened too much, my grandpa was the last one. The Past, The Love was uh, a poem that I wrote to say at his funeral, and I just couldn't do it. And I had a one of my uncles do it, and he slaughtered it. And never, I didn't want it to go out like that. I didn't want him to be like, "Oh man, he wrote me some shitty, shitty poem." So I was like, "All right, gotta turn it into a song." And even that song was originally like five and a half minutes long, a full band screaming and whatnot. And uh, we wrote it in the piano way in the studio, and. Um, it meant a lot to me that they let me do that because, uh, you know, that was a personal song and they it could have gotten scratched. I mean, we had other stuff, but they let me put that one on the record, which or the EP, which was cool. And um, I want to do the same thing for my mom. I've been working on, I mean, when I got robbed like two years ago, uh, the computer that they took had everything that I'd written, uh, which... It was all based off of like real stories and memories and shit so that my family can get something out of it too. Um, so I definitely have a track that I know Nick's going to kill and uh, there will be more stuff like that. I want to be able to reach everybody because now we'll be able to have a, you know, a bigger budget and a longer time in the studio and... I'm excited. I'm excited to write new music because I got a lot of fucking shit on my chest that I want to get off with the, with the heavy stuff and then the soft stuff too because I don't know. I, I like the prettier shit. <laughs> I've always been into the, the soft music. Like Skylar Drive is one of the only bands of that style that, you know, because I like our music. When I got the EP, I listened to it for probably a year straight. <laughs> Every day. Um, same with Watch Out There's Ghosts, too, though. I just, I love music. I love creating it. And I love listening to it so much that I could perfect it and make it back, make it better the next time. I've just never been in a band where I've done two records. It's always one and done. So, yeah, there, there will be stuff. Um, I, uh, I have an idea that I haven't talked to the band too much about, but. I've gotten a lot of um, very emotional confessions from fans and stuff, and I would like to talk to them about, you know, having them explain it to me again and have a track where I can kind of make some lyrics that can kind of relate to everybody. So, you know, when they're having that day, you know, suicide's a big thing. I'm no stranger to it. Um, I just want to be able to help people. Man, that's all I want to fucking do. I just want to use this platform while it's still built and it's still, and I'm still relevant. And I just want to be able to reach as many people as I can before it gets taken away or COVID happens again or fucking God comes back. I don't know. But yeah, tell whoever um, asked that question. And I'm always in usually the Instagram DMs and Twitter DMs. I write back. I spend at least like six to eight hours a day talking to people. So if there's anything they wanted to share with me or talk about, then I'm open. And that goes for anybody. Um, I am not judgmental. As you can tell, I admit to all my problems. And, uh, you know, life is just, just giving an opportunity to try new shit. You fuck up and you learn from it. And it's always nice to have somebody to talk to. And I don't want to, I don't know what else I can get out of being in a band other than helping people because the money sucks. <laughs> the <laughs> catering usually sucks. <laughs> I got a beautiful girlfriend. I don't need the fucking band aids, but <laughs> the the last uh, appreciate the cute girls that come. The 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 last question I uh, I have you for, uh, for you, sir, is is there any form of timetable that you could, I mean, approximately. Like, can we expect this new record from the boys and you uh, before 2022 is over? I'll say it like that. Yeah, I think so. Excellent. Hell yeah. 
Uh, I definitely think so. And if uh, if not, it would just be because we went a bigger, you know, took a better deal and teamed up with the people that could do more for us than our own. Because we've only been able to promote the band off our personal Facebooks. You know, there's no other, uh, and and of course you and demo team and shout out demo team, a couple other uh, um, podcasts. Like other than that, we don't. We're all self promoting, so we might take a an offer and we might, you know, put this out on something a little bit bigger than us. And if that takes a while, that might. But if anything, I won't let it go longer than. January 23rd of next year, because that's when She Watch the Sky came out in 2007. So, hell yeah. That will be the latest date. Cool. Well, dude, we appreciate. I'm probably watching this like Jordan. <laughs> we, we appreciate you uh, <laughs> chatting with us again, Jordan. Uh, you're no stranger around here on the show, man. Uh, excited to hear some new music for sure. I know that the. Oh, yeah. The, the drama going on behind the scenes is frustrating, but just hang in there, brother. Hopefully everything works out. And, and like you said, both parties are happy and uh, everyone can move on in the end. And we'll let that play out behind the scenes because that's just how that stuff has, has to work out, unfortunately. But uh, we're excited about the shows, man. Oh, yeah. Can't wait to hear the new stuff. Uh, thank you so much for spending some time with us. We'll be chatting. I'll, I'll be chatting with you soon. And uh, I know that there could be a show in LA, maybe sometime this year. If so, I'll be there. We'll hang out. But, uh, dude, thank you so much for. Oh, I gave I gave you the confirmation. I, I know what it is, but but that. it hasn't been announced, so Holy I can't God. I can't say anything yet. I can't say anything yet because it hasn't been announced. So, <laughs> but hopefully, uh, you guys, yeah, but you definitely get you'll get a guest list for that one, and we're gonna fucking bring in a party. I got some shots at the bar waiting for you boys. Hell yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. Jordan Blake, OG of Skylar Drive July, lineup. Man. Show's coming out left and hey, right. We're playing together in, in July, right? July 23rd. Dark Hell yeah, bro. I'll see you there, When man. you guys are headlining. His band's Hell called yeah. uh, Promises oh, Unsaid, okay. at Promises we're Unsaid on party Facebook. party that night, too. Oh, yeah, we're partying. <laughs> cool. Cool, cool. Hell yeah. Jordan, enjoy the rest cool, of your day, bro. sir. Thank you. Thank you so much again for, for stopping by, hanging out with us. And uh, cheers, brother. We'll, we'll chat soon, man. Yeah, y'all stay safe. Keep you doing as well. What you're doing. I'll talk to y'all soon. Peace, dude. Yeah, man. Jordan Black. Give me Bye. a hell yeah. Oh, Jordan yeah. Blake, bitches. <laughs>